TV Network, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Living in the West, a series of episodes where we look into the lives of the Muslims living in the West. We look into their strategies, their visions, how to take these strategies forward on a personal and community level. I have with me today Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad from the Muslim Research and Development Foundation, a think tank and organization which provides solutions for Muslims in the West. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, we started speaking about it in a previous episode, but we never really went into it, which was one of the aspects that the Muslims live in. They live in three main spheres, which is a social, an economical, of course, a political sphere. We spoke about visions and strategies before. One of those points that always comes up is marriage. Marriage in a non-Muslim society in the West. Can we explain to me, Sheikh, what are the parameters in which we can adapt this marriage. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Once we talk about marriage, we have to explain a few things. First of all, we are talking about marriage from the people of the book. This is one thing. Mm -hmm. We have clearly said, okay, before, that Muslims are not allowed to marry from the non-Muslims who do not belong to this category, the category of the people of the book. Mm -hmm. So this is the first thing. The second thing, and by the way, this is by consensus. And no Muslims should claim that, well, there is a khilaf on this. Let us look at it. We need a new ijtihad, etc., etc. This is totally haram and we are not allowed to do this. this. Is, totally haram. And we will mention the ayat. Okay, so totally haram, he said, the man other than Ahlul Kitab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Allah Jalla wa Ala was talking about the, the Mu'minat migrating to the land of Al-Islam. Allah Jalla wa Ala commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to test them. If they are believers, true believers, then they should not send them back to the disbelievers. Allah Jalla wa Ala said they are not allowed, they are not permissible mm -hmm. in marriage for those disbelievers. And the disbelievers are not allowed for them, full stop. Allah Jalla wa Ala in Surah Al-Baqarah said وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنْ Don't give, don't marry the mushrikat until they believe. And Allah Jalla wa Ala said وَلَا تُنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا And don't give in marriage the mushrikeen until they or before they uh, become uh, believers. So this is clear and Ibn Qudama in Al-Mughni and many others, as sarkhasi etc. Scholars from all the madhahib have stated that it is totally prohibited to marry from the people, from other mushriks other than this circle. Now, in terms of the people of the book, we have two cases. We have Muslim males Mm -hmm. marrying non-Muslim or Ahli Kitabi or Kitabiya women, okay? And we have the opposite. Kitabi men, okay, or the people of the book, men marrying Muslim women. The second case, which is non-Muslims, even if they are from the people of the book, marrying Muslim women, it is totally prohibited and it is not allowed. Actually, some scholars said if a woman does that, knowing that he is from the people of the book and knowing that it is haram, she might be acting an act of disbelief because this has been clearly indicated in the Quran and it is a matter of consensus. Anyway, we don't want to get with this issue, this opinion that they are committing an act of kufr is authentic opinion or not, but this is a well-established principle. Now, 
in terms of people, okay, men marrying kitabi women or women from the people of the book, mainly we have two cases, marrying them in the Dar of Al-Islam and marrying them in Dar Al-Harm, okay? You remember we had this classification of Dar al-Islam and Dar al-Harb. And some people say that why do we need, you remember when we discussed this issue, why do we need to get into this classification? Why don't we have another classification? And we said that we cannot just avoid this classification because it has been stated. Established as well. Yeah, established. And moreover, and this is one of the miracles of Sharia, that you cannot change something without this change affecting other things and like it is a sophisticated machine if you take one wire don't think that the machine will operate as it used to operate it's interconnected everything is connected parallel very interconnected that's why we cannot just change something from sharia and expecting that the sharia runs smoothly in other spheres and this is one of the examples that if we say that dar al-islam and dar al-kufr just wipe it out and let us think of a new terminology then there are some other consequences. For example, many of the scholars dislike, and some of them even made it prohibited for the Muslim man to marry a non-Muslim woman in Dar al-Harb. Why mm -hmm. in Dar al-Harb? Why? Because they gave many reasons. And the main reasons are the following. The first one is that his son, if he produces children, their children will be influenced by the situation of Dar al-Harb because the Muslim at that time does not have any kind of supremacy in Dar al-Harb or Hawa. So his children will inevitably be influenced by the cultures of the Harbis of the, or the people in Dar al-Harb. This is one reason. The other reason is the fact that if he has a son whose mother is not a Muslim and his mother is a Harbi and he is living in Dar al-Harb, the son is living in Dar al-Harb and the Muslims attacked them or there was a war between them and the Muslims, that son will be taken as a right hand possess. He will become Raqiq and because he is in Dar al-Harb. Therefore, this should not happen and the person should not marry a person to produce a child that might reach to that situation. Now, we might say that this reason is a little bit far away, but the first reason is a very important reason, which is the authority, okay, is not given to that Muslim. In another word, the wilaya is not given to the Muslim. The wilaya is given to what? To the woman because she is in her country, which is Dar al-Harb, and she has more power. This is very important to observe. Why? Because once we ignore this issue of marrying women in Dar al-Harb because of the complexity that we have mentioned about the classification of Dar al-Islam and Dar al-Harb. And we said, okay, let us, and as we said before, that this Dar is Dar al-Ahd to mm -hmm. a certain degree, and the Muslims living there, they have the issue of social contract between themselves and that country, although it might be seen from one angle as Dar al-Harb. If we ignore that and we say we are not considering the situation of Dar al-Harb, this is a new narrative and we have to look at it from this angle. But there are similarities between the contemporary situation and what the scholars mentioned about marrying a woman from Dar al-Harb, which is what? In Dar al-Harb, the authority is given to the woman. the woman. In most of the non-Muslim countries, the authority is given to what? To the woman because they give rights to women more than men. And sometimes they are biased towards... Do, these rights of custody more? The, no, of no rights of custody, other rights, even mm. rights of, 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 of wealth. Of, yes, of assets rights to end the marriage, rights even to take the husband to a police if there is something wrong. So she has more power. So that element has to be considered when we are talking about marrying from 
أهل الكتاب who live in non-Muslim countries whether we classify them as Dar al-Harb or we classify them as Dar al-Ahl. Okay, just a point before we go to the break. Is it Islamically a principle that the man always has the walaya? He's the one who's always in charge of the relationship? Yes, yes, and this is a very important principle. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض. I know many people don't like to quote this ayah in the Western context, but this is our Quran, and we should not be ashamed of our religion. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, الرجال قوامون على النساء. الرجال are superior to women. Full stop. بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا because what Allah Jalla wa Ala given to men and because what men are spending over their wives. Okay, Jazakallah Shaket, and we're going to go carry on this topic of marriage, a very interesting topic. Please stay with me in this episode of Living in the West. We we'll return in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, may peace be upon him, said, If any one of you improves in following Islam, then his good deeds will be rewarded ten times to seven hundred times for each good deed. And a bad deed will be recorded as it is. Sahih Al-Bukhari, Volume 1, Book of Faith, Hadith Number 42. Images, images, and depictions, and depictions of our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have spread around the globe. May endless blessings be upon thee. His life is being examined in the glare of the global media spotlight. the duty of every Muslim, every Muslim to present to the world the truth of his life and the excellence of his character. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the universe. To do this, you have to know your prophet. It's something that you simply can't afford to be ignorant of. Send your peace on your slave Muhammad. Study the exemplary personality of our Prophet, peace be upon him, which attracts people of all faiths and nationalities in Know Your Prophet, peace be upon him. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Living in the West. Just uh, before the break there, Sheikh, we're speaking about marriage, and you explained to us that marriage is seen to non Muslims at this Ahl al Kitab uh, as two types, meaning in two aspects Dar al Islam and Dar al Harb or Dar al Kufr. Can we expand upon this, Sheikh, and go into some details, inshallah? Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. So we said, in a nutshell, even if we don't consider the non Muslim countries now as Dar al Harb, and we build all the consequences upon that, and we consider them as a mixture between Dar al Ahd, Dar al Harb, and other kind of a mixture between these territories. As Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, considered Mardin at that time, he said that Dar is a combination of Dar al Islam and Dar al Kufr. And by the way, we forget to quote Ibn Taymiyyah on this because it is really a very interesting quotation that he considered Mardin, Mardin at the borders of Syria, north of Syria, south of Turkey, as, as a dar of a mixture nature between Dar al-Kufr, Dar al-Ahd, and Dar al-Harb. So if we consider 
those non-Muslim countries having that situation, then we should look at the other perspective with regards to marrying from non-Muslims or from Kitabi women. With regards to marrying from Kitabi women, scholars have two opinions. Most of the scholars believe that it is allowed to marry Kitabi women. And very minor number of scholars believe that it is not allowed to marry Kitabi women. And this opinion has been attributed to Ibn Umar. Some of the scholars attributed it to Umar ibn al-Khattab and Ibn Abbas. Mainly those scholars who said that it is allowed to marry from the people of the book, they said, Allah Jalla wa Ala said clearly in the Quran, وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ that the muhsanat from the people of the book are allowed for you. So, and this is a concession because Allah Jalla wa prohibited marrying the mushrikat mm -hmm. and prohibited allowing the Muslims to send the believing women to the mushrikeen. But Allah Jalla wa gave a concession that marrying those women is allowed. Now, question may come up about muhsinat, Sheikh. What, what okay. do you mean by this? Because yes. This is a topic there itself. are certain conditions. Mm -hmm. But before going into these conditions, let us go to the second opinion. The second opinion by Ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Allah jalla wa ala clearly said that don't marry the polytheist. And he said, وَأَيُّ شِرْكٍ أَعْظَمَ مِنْ أَنْ تَجْعَلَ عِيسَى رَبًا mm -hmm. What? Shirk is bigger than considering Isa as a Rabb. So he said, yes, they are originally the people of the book, but they take the ruling mm -hmm. of Mushrikeen because they are claiming that Isa is the Lord. So according to this opinion, it is not allowed to marry from the people of the book. But the opinion of the Jumhur yani, is supported by the Ayah wal muhsanatu min al utul kitab and it is supported also by the fact that some of the Sahaba married from the people of the book. It will be interesting to know that Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman married to a Christian lady and Talha ibn Ubaidullah married to a Jew lady. And the, it is very interesting to know that Umar ibn al-Khattab became very angry when he knew that and even he forced them to divorce them. Then they said, we will don't be angry, O Umar, we will divorce them. It was reported that Umar ibn al-Khattab dissolved the marriage. And it was, anyway, this narration has been disputed. But uh, we don't want to get into it, of course. But it took place. And this is the opinion that has been adopted by the majority of the scholars. However, those scholars, they differ. Many of them, they say, although it is allowed, but it is disliked means it should not be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Very few number of scholars said that it is allowed and if he knew that this lady would accept Islam, then then it is liked, okay, mustahab. But the issue is, as we mentioned earlier, that the wilaya has to be given to the mu'min, not to the lady, the women. And we said we should consider this condition carefully in the current circumstances because although we are not calling those non-Muslim European countries are Dar al-Harb and the superiority because they are Harb is given to them, mm -hmm. we are not calling them like this. However, because of their laws and the nature of their systems, okay, mm -hmm. the superiority is given to women in most circumstances. Maybe not full superiority, but this has to be carefully witnessed. Why do we say that? Because we have seen so many cases where Muslims marrying non-Muslim ladies and then they produce children and the children, they become non-Muslims. Let alone the so many cases where the Muslims, Muslim children, they lose their identity as Muslims. Two times. Some of them, they forget Islam completely, and some of them, they forget their identity. And I do remember 
there is a thesis or a PhD a thesis by Sheikh Salim Al-Rifai who wrote about Ahwal al-Shakhsiya fil Gharb, the personal law in the West and he was given the experience of Germany and he mentioned so many stories of those Muslims marrying non-Muslim ladies and their children became non-Muslims. I do remember on a personal level, I do remember that I was in a market mm -hmm. and I saw a lady with her daughter and then they knew that of course I am Muslim okay mm -hmm. and uh, my wife was with me with her hijab they started a discussion and the daughter has her name Muhammad she's a pure Christian or look like a pure Christian her, her, her surname is Muhammad huh? her surname is Muhammad mm -hmm. pure Christian it looks for me as a pure Christian white young girl and I was amazed and her mother told me that my ex-husband is Muslim or was Muslim from one of the Arab countries and I don't remember whether he died or he divorced her and she took care of that daughter and that daughter became a Christian and there are many examples like this and uh, there are some efforts from some organization in Australia and in some other in uh, I think in America to take care of those people who have Islamic origins the roots, uh, in, the Islamic roots, roots yeah, yeah in order to bring them back to Islam okay so that that's quite clear now okay so but, but the the question that may come up is um, if it's allowed now, okay, on, in certain circumstances, and it is allowed, the question of muhsinat comes, the definition of what type of person, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this condition there. Yeah, okay. This condition, Allah jalla wa ala said, wal mm -hmm. So, as we said, the scholars gave two conditions. First of all, the wilayah is given to the Muslim man because this is the nature of the contract, the marriage contract that the wilayah is given to the man. The second condition is the one mentioned in this ayah, wal muhsanat. What does al muhsanat? Al muhsanat means that she does not commit zina. Okay? Some scholars said if she committed zina before and she repented from that zina, okay, <coughs> then she is allowed to, or you are allowed to marry her. Now, they said, how can you identify whether she repented from zina or not? They said if she committed zina and after that she stopped committing that and many men approached her or she was approached by many or some men and then she refused to commit that kind of zina, then she is muhsana. In this case, it is allowed to marry her. Now, it is true that we see so many Muslim men, especially those immigrants who want to get, for example, official documents to live in Western countries. And we have witnessed this in France and all, almost all European countries and America. They get married to women, just women from sometimes from the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they live with them and then they produce children and then they start to have these problems. Of course, it has to be muhsana and afifa. We witnessed also that some Muslim men who marry non-Muslim women whom they don't know their background after marriage, they started to have arguments because they say that, okay, their wives started to go out with other men, maybe for zina or maybe just for friendship. And this is really problematic. That's why Allah Jalla wa Ala said, Wal Muhsanatu. And so, in general, this direction should not be encouraged. There might be some exceptions. By the way, I read a few years ago that the Archbishop in one of the European countries he clearly discouraged this interfaith marriage. And he said that. Christians have different cultures, different faiths, different value system to marry 
is in particular to marry Muslims who are on the other far end. This will create so many problems for both couples and in particular it will, it will create problems for the children because there will be a dichotomy okay for the children should they follow this culture or should follow the other culture in order to avoid this he is recommending that this interfaith marriage to be stopped okay Sheikh Hetman Haddad I think we'll uh, we'll carry on this topic in the next episode Jazakallah khair for all your comments oh yeah we're gonna talk about marriage again in the next episode of Living in the West. Please do join me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The more you hear about it, the more you desire to prepare for it. Life after death. Journey of the soul. The day of resurrection. The torment of the hellfire. The reward of paradise. Stay tuned for a life-changing, heart-softening, spiritually uplifting series about the hereafter exclusively on Peace TV. Know the vivid descriptions of paradise and hellfire from the Quran and authentic Ahadith and acquire life-changing habits to be successful in the hereafter. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.